Hey folks, Chris Van Deviver here with Logic Pro Expert. You know, not since the 10.5 update has Apple been so loud and proud about the drag and drop functionality that now exists in Logic Pro 10. And honestly, for good reason. Drag and drop functionality was not a prime time feature for Logic until very recently with the 10.5 update. Thanks to the new and updated samplers in Logic Pro 10, we now have so much opportunity to just drag and drop around Logic to get what we need done. And today I wanted to go over a variety of those drag and drop options we now have. And I'm going to focus on three key areas. Number one, the tracks area number two, the different samplers, and number three, the loops library. Starting with the tracks area, we've long had the ability to drag and drop within the tracks area. Let me just navigate to my finder, and I'm going to select a couple of tracks here. I'm just gonna select a random array. I'm going to drag them into the tracks area. Now check it out, we can just drag right in, create new tracks, no biggie. Logic has now been populated with the tracks that I've dragged in. It's really that simple. You don't really have to go through an import dialog if you don't want to. But drag and drop doesn't just stop there. In fact, we can now just click and drag any region into the empty tracks area right below all of our regions. And when we do that, it creates a duplicate and identical track for this region. So check it out. Let's introduce the EQ. Let's introduce the compressor. And let's now do the same thing. So let's drag, drop with the exact same plugin chain for our track here, the party trap loop. Now, if I hold option and do the same thing, we duplicate the region and the channel strip itself, but the fun doesn't just stop there. Let's select the snap section here. I'm gonna separate it. And I'm going to drag this region right in the track headers. And we now have a variety of options for creating a new sampler instrument. We can create a new quick sampler instrument, drum machine designer, or alchemy. And this is just fantastic. Let's open the quick sampler, optimize. Logic has now bounced this region in place, opens it up into Drum Machine Designer. And right from here, we have an individual sample for each pad. We can see that the empty section right before our snap here got caught, but perfect. We now can play these individual snaps across Drum Machine Designer. But what I love even more is not the ability to just drag into the headers, but we can now drag regions and audio files into the samplers themselves. Now, previous to 10.5, you could load your own samples into Alchemy, into Drum Machine Designer, but we really had to navigate a convoluted system where we could only bring in audio files from like the Finder or the project browser, but never from regions within our project. But now that's all changed. So if I take that same party snap region, drag it onto this pad here, it's bounced and now it's placed onto that pad, which now brings us to the topic of samplers and how drag and drop works within the samplers. So as you saw, if I drag this region right into the bottom section, we can add it to a variety of samplers, but instead let's open the loops library and select a variety of different Apple loops. And let's drag those into the track header. So now we have different options from drum machine designer or the sampler because both of these samplers allow for more than one sample where alchemy and quick sampler allow for one sample at a time. Cool, so let's just pick sampler. Let's see what happens here. And just like that, all of our different Apple loops are now placed in their own zones across the keys. It's pretty crazy and we can adjust it from here if we so choose so we could click and drag this across, but it's just pretty nuts that we can do this. Now let's backtrack here and let's look for an Apple loop. I'm gonna select pattern loops and I'm also going to select an instrument of drum and let's collapse this. All right, so let's pick this 80s disco beat and drag it in. And we're gonna drag into quick sampler optimized. Now this is a pattern loop. Logic is still going to bounce this region in place so it can identify where the transients are and treat it as an audio file. Now check it out, our 80s disco beat has now been sliced in slice mode in the quick sampler, so each transient has its own key that's played on, which is just amazing. But what's even better is, is now that this has been sliced across, and let's even fine tune it from here. Let's set the snap mode to transient, and I wanna hone in on just a specific set of beats. So let's bring the end here, you know, so we have a very select amount, zoom in, so we've got... Beautiful. Let's now hover our mouse in the bottom half of the quick sampler, which now brings up this rectangle. And if we drag this in onto the track lane of a software instrument, awesome. We now have a MIDI region of our different samples that are playable. 
So there's so much opportunity to drag into the tracks area, to drag into samplers. In fact, let's just introduce as well an instance of Alchemy just so we can show it off. So Alchemy, create. And let's go to file, initialize preset. So we're starting with a brand new preset. And in fact, let's use our loop right here. So it's MIDI, drag this in, and I'm gonna set it to sampler. Now Logic has bounced the sample in place. And if we take a look, we can see that our sample is right within the sampler tab within Alchemy, which now brings us to the Apple loop section. Because the Apple Loops, I don't think a lot of people recognize that you can drag into and out of the Apple Loops. Let's, in fact, create a loop right here. So let's set our loop right where that transient begins. And then let's get rid of this. Set this so it's right on bar three. And then we'll chop it at bar five. Who knows if the tempo is correct. But let's now take this loop and drag it into the Apple Loops browser. And just like that, we now have the Apple Loops dialog to be able to create our own sample. It can be either a loop or one shot, but we can just drag right in and we can set it all up. We don't have to dive through menus to achieve this. And we can go in the opposite direction. So let's shrink this back up, select a variety of different loops, drag them in. And just like that, we have a new track lane for each of these patterns, which is just fantastic. So the barriers to entry of being able to use the samplers, being able to use the track area, the loops library, dragging in between the finder and the loops library and the different areas of logic are just breaking down. We're seeing fewer and fewer of these barriers between us and getting our creative work done. One other thing that just might be worth your while is it turns out that there's a little Easter egg, and let me close down some of this stuff, is that we can actually export by dragging out of logic. So check it out, we have this double funk beat, drag it out, and now Logic has exported this beat as its own file. Whatever the last settings were in your export dialog when you export a track, so if you left it as WAVE or AIF or you know whatever the case may be, let's just take a look at the export dialog. And one track is audio file. So whatever the last settings you had for your export options, save format AIFF, WAVE, bit depth, it's going to export those elements when you just drag out of Logic. And the different regions can be dragged into other applications around your Mac. This feature is still a little primitive at the moment, but I can't wait to see what the future might bring. I hope this was helpful for you. Once again, I'm Chris Vandeviver with Logic Pro Expert.